Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about benign prostatic hyperplasia on ultrasound. Benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH is a common condition in elderly men. It is an abnormal enlargement of the prostate. We will be only looking at transrectal ultrasound images of the prostate to learn how a normal prostate and an enlarged prostate looks in this view. On a transrectal view or truss image, the prostate is divided into zones. There are three main zones of the prostate. The peripheral zone constitutes 70% of the prostate, while the central zone makes up approximately 25%. The central zone surrounds the ejaculatory ducts and appears less prominent on ultrasound. Clinically, it is relatively less significant because cancers and inflammation rarely occur in this region. The transition zone is only 5-10% to of the prostate gland, but this zone is usually affected in BPH. Now, we will compare the image of the normal prostate with benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is the prostate gland. The normal volume of the prostate should be less than 30 ml. Prostate volume is calculated by using this formula. Height into width into length into 0.52. The height and the width can be measured in the transverse plane. The length is measured in longitudinal plane. The truss images are inverted. The ultrasound probe is at the bottom of the image and the rectal wall is just anterior to the probe. In the transverse plane, this larger echogenic structure is the peripheral zone of the prostate and this smaller hypoechoic structure is the transition zone. The transition zone can also appear heterogeneous in some cases. In normal cases, the peripheral zone occupies the majority of the prostate in the image and this dark transition zone occupies a smaller region. This hypoechoic Almost anechoic linear region in the center is the urethra. The transition zone is seen around the urethra. This hypoechoic area is the bladder. In the image on the right, it is a longitudinal view. This long structure, echogenic structure, is the peripheral zone. The transition zone is up here and this is the bladder. This is an image showing benign prostatic hyperplasia. The prostate is enlarged in this image. You can see an enlarged transition zone. This hypoechoic heterogeneous structure is the transition zone. It is bigger as compared to the transition zone in the normal image. This enlargement of the transition zone indicates benign prostatic hyperplasia. Due to the enlargement of the transition zone, there is thinning of the peripheral zone. The peripheral zone appears thin as compared to the peripheral zone in the normal image. This is the peripheral zone in the normal image. Overall, the gland will be enlarged and the prostate volume will be greater than 30 milliliters. Here is another image of benign prostatic hyperplasia. The prostate gland is enlarged with enlargement of the transition zone and thinning of the peripheral zone. The gland becomes more hypoechoic and heterogeneous because of enlargement of the transition zone. This is the transition zone, the enlarged transition zone, and the peripheral zone is very thin. It is down here. 
sometimes you may find a hypoechoic boundary between the transition zone and the peripheral zone. This boundary is called surgical capsule. This image shows BPH in longitudinal plane. You can see an enlargement of the hypoechoic transition zone. This entire area is the transition zone of the prostate and the more echogenic peripheral zone is down here. The prostate gland is enlarged with increase in size of the transition zone and thinning of the peripheral zone. In this case of BPH, there were urethral calcifications present. This hyperechoic linear structure is the calcified urethra. Also, you can see enlargement of the transition zone. This hypoechoic heterogeneous area is the transition zone. This is another image of a normal prostate. This echogenic area is the peripheral zone. And this hypoechoic area is the transition zone. And this central hypoechoic region is the urethra. And up here is the bladder. In this case of BPH, calcifications are also present in the transition zone. The transition zone is enlarged. This hypoechoic line between the transition zone and the peripheral zone is the surgical capsule. The peripheral zone appears thin as compared to the peripheral zone in the normal image. We have another image of the prostate here. The central zone is between the peripheral and the transition zone at this location. The echogenic area is the peripheral zone and the hypoechoic area is the transition zone. This is the urethra. In BPH, the prostate may become more rounded in appearance and more hypoechoic and heterogeneous. The transition zone is enlarged and the prostate has a hypoechoic heterogeneous appearance. In this image, a rounded, enlarged prostate is seen. The normal prostate is usually somewhat triangular or pyramidal in shape, especially at the apex. But in this case, it appears more rounded. In some areas, the surgical capsule can appear hyperechoic as well. This is the surgical capsule which is between the transition zone and the peripheral zone. The peripheral zone appears very thin. In this image, this is the peripheral zone. And this hypoechoic area is the transition zone. And this is the bladder. And over here we have an enlarged prostate which appears rounded in shape and more hypoechoic in echo texture. This is another case of BPH. You can see an enlarged hypoechoic heterogeneous transition zone. You can compare this appearance of the transition zone with the normal appearance. Normally, the transition zone is small and the peripheral zone is bigger and more echogenic than the transition zone. But over here, the peripheral zone is very thin. We have another case of BPH. The enlarged transition zone is visible. The surgical capsule is also visible. And the peripheral zone appears thin. One Doppler parameter which can be evaluated in BPH is resistive index. The resistive index of the capsular artery in the prostate. 
In BPH, the resistive index is 0.7 or higher in the capsular artery of the prostate. Intravesical prostatic protrusion is the enlargement of prostate and protrusion into the bladder floor. You will find bulging of the prostate into the bladder in cases of BPH. The severity of this bulging can determine the severity of BPH. It has three grades. This protrusion is usually measured in longitudinal plane. Normally, no bulging is present. There is no protrusion of the prostate into the bladder. This area is smooth. But in cases of BPH, you may find some protrusion of the prostate into the bladder. You can draw an imaginary line along the bladder wall and then you can measure the bulging prostate tissue. If this measurement is less than 5 millimeters, then it will fall into grade 1 intravesical prostatic protrusion or IPP. If this measurement is between 5.1 and 10 millimeters, then it is considered grade 2 IPP. And if it is greater than 10 millimeters, then it is grade 3 intravesical prosthetic protrusion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.